What's up guys, this is Dan for BladeReviews.com, back with a review of another knife. This time we're going to be checking out the Spyderco Schlich Bowie, which is designed by Polish knife maker Marcin Schlich. This is the second collaboration he's done with Spyderco, the first being the Techno, which is a small, chunky little uh, titanium frame lock folder that was released a couple years ago, met with critical acclaim, and still... A very well received and highly regarded pocket knife. So uh, there was a lot of uh, excitement and fanfare in the uh, anticipation of the release of this the Schlich Bowie, which hit the shelves not too long ago. And I've had some time to check mine out to test and use it, and I'm ready to share some thoughts. I have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, one of the kind of interesting aspects about this knife is that I think it is the closest thing Spyderco has come to releasing a competitor or their answer to the Sebenza 21, um, which is kind of a curious topic because over the years people have always uh, been very interested in quote-unquote Sebenza killers and knives that uh, stack up to the Sebenza and you know since then, the, the conversation, I think, has changed a little bit as we've entered into this world of high-end production knives, of titanium frame lock flippers. The conversation has shifted somewhat away from the Sebenza and more towards other things, but still the Sebenza is a very relevant piece, still extremely highly regarded, and I think that the thought of a Sebenza killer of some sort is still uh, still an interesting topic. Um, even if it is a little bit dated, I guess. But uh, anyhow, let's get into it here. I've got some quick specs for you. The Schlich Bowie has an overall length of 7.79 inches. It's got a 3.42 inch long blade. Weight is 4.3 ounces. This is made at Spider Coast Taichung, Taiwan facility. So made in Taiwan, uh, just as beautifully as all the other Taiwanese knives that I've handled from Spider Co. Uh, not limited to this. Sage 1 that I've got next to it for a little size comparison. Uh, the Schlich is kind of an interesting interesting size here. It actually pencils out between a large and small Sebenza. It's almost like a medium sized Sebenza, if you will, with that sub 3.5 inch blade and weight of just over 4 ounces. So it's kind of an intriguing package for daily carry. It's a little larger than what I typically carry, but still totally doable as an EDC. Uh, for me at least, so it, it'll depend greatly on where you live and what you can uh, ca comfortably carry here. But it is a, a nice working knife here and, and on the larger side, I guess, for everyday carry. At any rate, let's take a look at the blade here, which is an impressive high-polished and then stone-washed piece of uh, CTS XHP stainless steel. You can see very reflective. It's catching my lights and and my camera equipment here. Hopefully we won't catch me in the mirror of this uh, lovely clip point blade. And it is uh, something of a, a non-traditional clip point. The actual clip starts very early on and, and extends quite far and is a somewhat gradual uh, clip point blade here. And it makes for a funky kind of uh, looking knife here. I mean, Marcin Schlich has a, a very much his own design language, sort of forward-leaning, minimalistic, uh, very, very kind of charming pieces. The Techno I thought was especially charming. The Schlich buoy stays a little bit truer to conventional knife patterns, but, but he still has this kind of funky, the handle's bigger than the blade kind of look to it that uh, is distinctly his own. So... Um, as far as the performance of this blade goes, it has been given a full flat grind. That polish, that high high uh, definition polish there, it really brings out some good slicing performance from the knife. It really does cut well. I've pressed this into some harder use tasks in addition to a lot of food prep, box opening, and stuff like that. And it's a great cutter here. Uh, you'll notice that it has a rounded spine much like the Sebenza and some high-end European offerings. I've always loved that detail, and it was great to see it on a Spyderco here. And it, uh, it it has a very capable tip, being a clip point here. I've always been a fan of Bowie blades, and 
to see it on a Spyderco is is nice. So uh, so well done on the blade here. That CTS XHP steel has held up well. It's relatively easy to sharpen. Uh, gets very sharp. Holds a good edge and has uh, had decent rust and corrosion resistance on my example. So I had a little bit of light staining that I was able to take out uh, with some barkeeper's friend. But beyond that, really no issues, certainly no rust with this knife. Uh, and that's um, just in kind of my normal carry and use. So it's been good. CTS XHP at this point I think is a proven steel especially in Spyderco's hands. I've had great results with uh, a number of Spyderco's and CTS XHP. Let's take a look at the handle here. Stonewashed titanium frame lock. So you've got full full titanium handles. And again, been given a nice stone wash, which personally I really like. I much prefer the stone washed handle over Chris Reeves' sandblasted or bead blasted handles that seem to pick up every scuff, every snail trail. Every uh, little dent and ding just seems to come out on those handles. Even if you look at them, they get scratched up. Here, Spyderco's uh, done us the favor of pre-scratching the knife for us. So I've been able to carry this guilt-free without worrying about putting that first scratch on there because the first scratch is always the hardest. And uh, the knife looks great with this stonewashed handle. Uh, the hardware itself has been bead blasted, so nice kind of matte finish hardware. Gives kind of a cool, sort of contemporary look to the, the handle here. You've got something of an oversized pivot. Everything else is screwed together. You do have a generous lanyard loop. And uh, another interesting detail is this backspacer. It's a black G10 backspacer. And one of the most distinctive characteristics of the Techno was the bright blue G10 backspacer, which kind of, which was kind of a, a love it or hate it proposition. Some people absolutely loved it. Others didn't really care for it, thought it was a bit on the flashy side. I fell more in line with the latter crowd. I, I prefer this uh, black G10 over the blue G10. Hey, you know, I know that variety is the spice of life, and... How many knives do you know that have a bright blue black spacer, excuse me, back spacer? Um, the answer, not many, but still, I prefer this more conservative black back spacer. It has been uh, very well finished, by the way. All the edges have been contoured. Part of the back spacer is flush with the handle, while a good portion of it uh, juts out and stands proud, maybe a millimeter or two from the handle. So. Uh, uh, very well done, kind of deceptively simple, but but uh, very well executed. It's got a lot of jimping on the uh, on the backspacer here. Does attract uh, or attract dust, so for whatever that's worth, dust and lint. It's been kind of hard to keep it clean, but beyond that, I do like the backspacer. It fits in well with the overall ergonomics of the knife, and it's uh, pretty comfortable because. The handles are 3D machined, which is something I failed to mention here, but it's actually been 3D machined, which has added, allegedly, some of the uh, cost to the knife is in these 3D machined handles, but they are comfortable. Um, and the knife itself is very comfortable. You do have some mild jimping here, which sort of reminds me of the jimping found on a Sebenza. Uh, certainly, you've got this backspacer with uh, more aggressive jimping with the G10 here. Very grippy. And then you've got a generous handle here, which will accommodate even larger hands like mine uh, without any issue at all. So ergonomically, it's it's pretty solid, and uh, you know you'll notice that really they haven't broken any of the lines here. The knife is fairly comfortable. I mean, there's certainly some corners to it. Uh, it's not the absolute most comfortable knife, but with that 3D machining of the handles, I think that has uh, helped make it more comfortable in hand and certainly you can cut a lot of stuff with this knife it's it's held up really well like I said even under some harder use so let's move to the pocket clip and the pocket clip is Spyderco's wire clip again it's been bead blasted for a nice uh, discreet look which I like it is a low profile relatively deep carry pocket clip ambidextrous right side left side tip up carry only uh, this is a proven clip design I've always been a big fan of the wire clip, so I'm pleased to see it here. I know some folks may not be wire clip fans, and uh, I'm sorry, but I like it. I really do.
So happy to see it here on the Schleich buoy. Let's talk about the deployment and lockup. Of course, you do have Spyderco's thumb hole being a Spyderco. Uh, I'm left-handed, and one of my problems with the with the Techno was that it was tough to open one-handed with your left hand. Here, the Schleich buoy is a little bit easier. You can kind of you can dig in and get it open. It doesn't flick open with your thumb if you're a lefty. You have to middle finger flip it, which actually works really well. The uh, action on the Schleich buoy is good, very good actually, and nice and smooth, opens and clicks open with authority there. Uh, so I really like that. It's on phosphor bronze washers like the Sabenza, and one question you probably have is how does it stack up to the Sabenza in terms of smoothness? It's very smooth. So I, I will say, I don't know if it's quote unquote Sabenza smooth, since each Sabenza seems to be a little bit different in its uh, smoothness, but this is a knife you can easily flick open, and I know that Chris Reeve kind of frowns upon that, so with his uh, Sabenza, so for whatever that's worth. Okay, let's talk about the uh, lock up here. You have a titanium frame lock. You'll see there's no stainless steel insert here, which is a shame. I really like the stainless steel insert. That is, for example, on my uh, Domino. So that helps generate a nice early lockup. The Domino is probably at 25%, and the Schleich buoy is pretty close to 100% at this point. It's like probably 80 to 90%, so relatively late lockup. But it's very secure. There's no blade play in any direction, no lock rock or anything like that. Uh, still very easy to disengage. Doesn't stick. Doesn't pop. Nothing like that. So, uh, so for what it is, I think they really did a good job executing it. But yeah, I would love to see a stainless steel lock bar insert. I think that that's a technology that should have been on this knife, especially given the price. So that takes us through all the features of the Schleich buoy and some of my thoughts on the various components of the knife. Uh, moving to final thoughts here. This knife is controversial, not so much because, in my opinion, it's the closest thing to a Sabenza that Spyderco's ever made. Uh, instead, it's so controversial because of the price. And I think the MSRP was something like $400. It uh, lists, it retails at 320 is where it was starting out, and now that it's been on the market for a few months, we've seen it trickle down. And I think on Amazon, when I was uh, looking at this, you could pick one up new on Amazon for something like $270, which is still a lot of money for a uh, pocket knife, obviously. And it's really been an interesting sort of debate on uh, on the written review from the readers there talking about whether they feel that this knife is worth the money or not, which is uh, a conversation that, that creeps into almost any uh, discussion of a high-end product, but um, especially given the broader context of the production knife market, how prices have been going up in general, and then we've seen a real focus on the high-end segment, whether you're looking at high-end Spydercos, high-end limited edition zero-tolerance knives, high-end uh, knives from Russia like Dashir Gorov, high-end Chinese knives, small batch titanium frame lock flippers with bearings and all that good stuff from China. Uh, all of that has, has sort of become a perfect storm here, and the uh, prices of knives seem to be going up and up and up. And some of the folks who, who were reading the review were saying, enough's enough, this knife is not worth $320, and that the, uh, the market is really trying to pinch the consumer here. Uh, personally, when I consider the value proposition of this knife relative to something like a Sabenza, which does retail, for $425 if you were to buy a large Sabenza new from the maker. Uh, here at, at around $300, there's a lot of things that I like about the Schleich buoy. I prefer the full flat grind, even though the thumb hole doesn't really work for lefties that well. I still prefer it over the thumb studs. I prefer the stone washed and 3D machined titanium handles. I like the backspacer. I prefer the steel uh, over the uh, S35VN featured on the Sabenzas these days. So there's a lot of things that I like. Uh, the fit and finish, as far as I'm concerned, is basically, they're basically on par. I know that's blasphemy for some, but, you know, the Schleich buoy is really well made. So if you compare it with a, a Sabenza, 
you know, it doesn't necessarily seem too out of line here, at least in my opinion, but uh, certainly you're welcome to your own opinion, and I, I look forward to hearing what you think about the Schleich buoy, whether it's worth the money, whether it's a colossal ripoff. Um, the, the debate has been interesting thus far, so I don't want to uh, discourage anybody from voicing their opinion. So, Guys, that's the review of the Schleich buoy. Thank you so much for watching the review. Once again, I'm Dan here for BladeReviews.com. Take care, and I will be back soon with another knife review.